Okay, we are recording. Excellent. I'm here with Joel Harlow. He's uh, sculpting something. What are you sculpting, by the way? Is it top secret? It, well, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't think anything really is top secret, but it's a, uh, a, a demon character for a television program. A television program. You yes, see, television those program. of us in our <laughs> 40s and 50s say program. I like my programs. Not TV show. <laughs> Well, we're going to kind of see this, I guess, uh, start to come to life as yeah, we chat. Yeah, 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 hopefully. And we are chatting today about your work on Hellboy. Yes, so, fun. Very fun. I'm very excited. I've only seen some trailers. I don't know anything about the movie. Okay. Um, what do you think? You've well, seen it? Well, in, in, in a seen... month, you'll know everything about the movie. Have you seen a cut? Have you seen I did. I, I saw a, uh, a little more than a rough cut um, about a month ago. Uh, there was some visual effects still being worked on, but uh, I was very happy. No spoilers, please. No, none. We're well, here. I can't. <laughs> no, actually, this will be coming out after the film releases. Oh, okay. So we're okay to do a little bit of spoiling. Okay, great. Uh, during this and interview. And then I don't have to rein anything in. So let's start at the beginning. How did you come on board the project? I received a phone call from one of the producers. Um, I was preparing uh, Godzilla, uh, King of Monsters at the time. Um, the guy headed up to straight makeup department on that. Um, and while I was preparing that, uh, Hellboy came in. You know, I got a call, submitted a budget, which is not how I normally do things. You know, normally production pays for everything. And, you know, I bring on the guys and I sort of supervise them. Uh, and we all just proceed together being paid through production. But this was, um, this one in particular was a traditional, you know, shop bill. So, you know, submit the budget, you know, they, they sort of let me know how much they had. And, um, you know, I, I came up with some numbers and, you know, got the go ahead and we started building. And what was the scope of the, the build at the beginning? How many characters? Uh, oh, what God. were you looking at? Well, my first off, my role on this is is a special character designer and special makeup effects uh, creator. So I not only designed the uh, prosthetic, you know, animatronic, you know, suit work, but also the digital characters. Um, and the reason for that was to, to keep everything sort of cohesive in the worlds, um, you know, in, that are in this film. Um, but for the build, you know, uh, the build here at the studio, it was... What the, uh, there were there were quite a few, you know, at least, you know, there are several, you know, of the same kind of character. So probably all in um, taking one each of them as their own, maybe 30 characters. Well, you don't have to name them all now. No, because we are yeah, men of a certain age <laughs> and that becomes difficult. Exactly. But uh, give me some of the, the highlight characters and then we'll just delve a little yeah. deeper into some of well, them during the interview. I mean, the There's that character. guy, yeah, Hellboy, of Hellboy, course. Hellboy, of course. Um, the Gruagak, uh, which was played by Doug Tate. Um, the Baba Yaga. Uh, there were some transformational pieces for Camazots. Oh my God, these names are so hard. I know, hard. right? The, the fans we'll, of the comics will know these. We'll go through each of them um, <laughs> one by one in a little bit of depth, but why don't we just start with the big guy himself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we are, you know, ironically, sadly, um, talking just a couple days after the memorial of Matt Rose, yeah. uh, who played such a massive role in the uh, original design. Uh, that was applied to Ron Perlman, the Guillermo del Toro yeah. version. How much of that was a jumping off point for you guys, that look, uh, and how much was it a whole new uh, ball game, basically using the, the comic? Um, yeah, it, it was not a jumping off point. There's, there's, I mean, one thing that we knew when we entered into this is that, you know, to try to replicate uh, something, you know, you know, a character, I mean, that, that Matt had sculpted beautifully. I mean, you, you couldn't do it, you know. So what we did is we tried to stay as far away from the original films, two films as possible, you know, because they're, they're beloved by, you know, fans of, you know, their fans, you know, Ron Perlman's fans, Doug Jones, uh, um, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, they, it's got a pretty strong, you know, fan following, you know, which includes me. Um, so we made a conscious effort not to reference any of the, the prior two films. 
Um, and instead, we only referenced uh, the comics, you know, be they uh, Mike's illustrations or any of the artists that have illustrated uh, Hellboy since. Like, you know, my, one of my all-time favorite illustrators is Richard Corbin. Uh, and he's done some work in, in uh, Mike's universe, you know, in the Hellboy universe. So um, we, we, we really only reference those. Um, and then, of course, you know, we have a new Hellboy, you know, David Harbour, uh, as opposed to uh, Ron Perlman. So um, you're building a character, you know, that, that takes sort of the anatomy of Mike's illustrations and you translate that onto a new actor, right off the bat, you're going to get something different. But you still want him to... I mean, if you translated, you know, the, the comics, the illustrations, one-to-one, -one, David wouldn't be able to perform, you know, and so much of this is performance. So uh, we we... Yeah, we, we had to scale it down just because you want his expressions to translate. Um, you know, you, you couldn't have as big of a jaw as we probably all initially wanted to, you know, or as heavy of a brow because it just wouldn't move. You know, that works great as like a bust or, you know, a mask or whatever. But, you know, when you're dealing with a makeup um, and a story like this that really does require a lot of acting chops, you want to help. You know, you want to help your, your lead actor, especially since David had not been in prosthetics to this extent. I mean, he's worn prosthetics because I've applied some to him in the past. He was in Black Mass and we had to age him. Uh, but this is, this is a different animal altogether. It's a, mass, it's a massive challenge wearing this level of prosthetics. What kind of testing uh, process did you go through with David to make sure he would be comfortable or, or did you not have much testing time? Well, the, the build was very quick, but you have to have, uh, you know, a testing period because, you know, like I said, you want everybody to be comfortable, not just David, but, you know, production, you know, Neil Marshall, our director. Um, so we we tested him three times before that happened you know I'd had a lot of conversations with David about sort of how we were going to approach this um, you know and make him feel like he was really a part of our world as opposed to changing our world to suit the character um, you know so he had to feel gritty he had to feel lived in he had to feel like he could be among us you know sweaty at times and you know greasy or whatever and hairy you know he had that body hair which i think helps take him out of that sort of comic book look and into a, sort of a real look we scarred him up a little bit and we didn't go for as deep of a red color um as as he's portrayed you know both in the comics and you know in the prior movies um and also what that allowed me to do is give me somewhere to paint too you know, so I could build that up in, you know, in layers. Because we tried one initially. One of our first tests was uh, something very red, like a fire engine red. And what I found right off the bat is that I couldn't really add, like, the skin imperfections or the depth. Uh, it just became about highlight and shadow, really just shadow. Because your deep red was already your highlights. You could only go darker. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you started getting muddy and gray and weird. Um, you know, and then in the uh, in the final cut, uh, they you know when they color time him, they take him towards the redder side, but he still has all that depth, um, which I was happy to see because he does. I mean, he needs to be deep red. What we cast him in was more of a like between a salmon and a red, you know. So it it did allow us, you know, some some leeway to make him feel a little more real you know blemishes and all that um but yeah i mean our tests were the first test we did was uh i think it was just his face you know the head uh and then you know he came back into town uh from new york or maybe from atlanta when he was shooting stranger things and we did a uh test with the body which was obviously one of the most you know, labor-intensive parts of that character. Uh, 
and found right off the bat that the body worked great really really good um and you know i give the lion's share of that credit to mario torres who sculpted the body and did an amazing job i mean moves and you know bends exactly where it's supposed to and is that a is that a foam suit or? it is yeah okay. roland uh, casted the the suit for us you know the best in the business so roland blanco floor blanco floor yes absolutely um he's doing uh some stuff for me right now um but uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, with something like this, I didn't want there to be any sort of unavoidable pitfalls. So, you know, you try to get the best people on the job as possible. Joey Orozco sculpted the face of, you know, the Hellboy. But then, you know, Hellboy goes through uh, Chris Hamburger, sculpted the hand. Um, uh, yeah, and, and there's, then there's another version of Hellboy, the Beast of the Apocalypse which is, you know, sort of his destiny. It's when his horns grow. Uh, Joey sculpted the horns as well. Um, and then Norman Cabrera sculpted the face for that second version because I wanted it to be not just our Hellboy makeup with longer horns. I wanted a completely different look facially for that. Um, so, yeah, Norman, Norman uh, you know, fortunately I had Norman on the project and he sculpted that as well as a lot of other stuff. Let's while while we're name checking the artists, uh, let's talk about other other key folk who help the build process. Even mold makers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyone? Gil just Gil I'm going to check with you for a for a full list. But who else do you want to name check? Joe Liberto, Absolutely, I could not have done this without him. He was, uh, you know, he's basically the shop foreman here. He is a shop foreman here, as well as you know one of the if not the best mold maker in the business. Um, Mikey Rotella uh, also came on board and actually came with us to Bulgaria um, and handled a lot of our sculpting um, both here and there. You know, there's basically 30 characters, so, you know, it was all hands on deck. Uh, you know, like I said, Mario Torres, um, you know, uh, uh, Chris Hamburger did the Hand of Doom. Uh, I know I'm going to blank on a lot of people. I mean, there was like 60 people. That's okay. We're going to get a full yeah. list. Um, just let it be known that Joel Harlow loves his Everybody. crew <laughs> and gives them all their due credit. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, they can take the credit. <laughs> um, take it. <laughs> take it. Um, so you mentioned Bulgaria. So yes. you guys get your test done. I you love get it. your You get your makeup <laughs> sculpted and you get yeah. your pieces run. And these are silicone pieces, I'm guessing? The, well, the body obviously is foam. Yeah. Um, the back of the head is foam. The neck is foam. Okay. Face uh, is silicone, lip is silicone, ears are silicone, all run by Josh McCarron, who's probably the best silicone runner in the business. Um, and, and uh, you know, I'm really lucky to have him. He helped me sculpt over in Bulgaria on the Baba Yaga character. Mm -hmm. So you're running all the pieces here, yep. shipping them out. Yep. And who goes to, who's applying on set, the, uh, the Hellboy makeup? Myself and Heather Mages uh, applied Hellboy. Uh, virtual, I mean, every day we did. Uh, then there were some days where I would then have to switch over and apply another makeup and Heather would primarily watch uh, David on set and I would, you know, maintain this other makeup even though we were in the same, you know, in, in the same proximity. So, you know, I could kind of keep an eye on both things. But, you know, with makeups as elaborate as these characters, as elaborate as these, you, you really want to stay focused. Yeah. So we split that duty. And what was your application time on the Hellboy makeup? Pretty generally quick. Speaking? It was, I mean, if you consider it's really a face and lip and ears and almost everything else is suit. It was about two and a half hours. Some days it was two hours. Um, you know, so it was, it was lightning fast. And what about when he had to be in the full foam uh, torso? Well, that, that's part of it. Oh, that's, that includes that. Oh, that, that's a suit. Oh, okay. You know, we zip it up the back. And, Every time. Okay. Yeah, you're good to go. You know? Great. Yeah, that's, you know, that's Mario's easy. sculpture. Wow. Yeah. Um, and David, uh, you know, he's he's in this makeup day in and day out. for How, how many days w was he in the makeup? He was in for about 55 days. Do you think he'll ever be in prosthetics again? Oh, does God, he have a multi I hope we do a deal? sequel. No, does yeah. he? So I, he, yeah, he took think, to it. I think so. I mean, if, if yeah. you know, if it's received... As well as I'm hoping, then you know there are a lot more characters coming, and of course David is going to have to shave at that point. Oh boy! <laughs> but he he was fine. He got into yes. the Zen mode and yeah, dealt. no, he was great. 
I mean, I remember at the beginning, it was like, you know, because we started, you know, we started shooting, I think it was September. And then he said, by like middle of November, I'm going to freak out. And never did. No, it was great. You know, he never had to time. do what uh, Jim Carrey had to do during Grinch and get the, uh, no. what, what are you, the torture specialist <laughs> yeah, from the, the military. The to, Navy SEAL yeah, guy. Like no, that. nothing like that. No, he was great the, the whole time. David Harbour is a real man, ladies yes, and gentlemen. You heard it here. He's a real here. man, and, um. and he's, you know, I can't think of anybody better to, to play the character. Well, uh, from the trailer, well, number one, huge fan of his from Stranger Things, of course. Yeah. And from the trailer, he's he's got the physical, he's got the physical, I mean, that's so much part of it. He's, his physical presence feels yeah. powerful. Yeah. And same in Stranger Things. He's a man. Yeah. So it works, and it seems like he's able to project through the makeup and not let it, uh, you know, get yeah. his way. And that's obviously great sculpture, but some actors just can't get through the makeup. Exactly. They, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a bit of a learning curve, you know. And some some performers pick it up right away, and some it takes a long time. Some never do, like you said. But uh, but he, you know, he was dedicated to, you know, to not just the look of the character but the performance of the character because it is you know it's it's heavy you mm -hmm. know it's not not in terms of weight but in in emotion emotional sense it's heavy what he had to do and was hellboy executed digitally uh for some parts uh um, i'm ma sure major there's action yeah maybe. i mean i'm sure there's some stuff like that like you know he, there's a part where a giant knocks oh. him across a field like you know 60 yards it's mm -hmm. like i'm that's definitely digital you know right um so david harper isn't a real man <laughs> he is more than a real man i've got a photo he's not willing to be smacked 60, <laughs> 60 feet for his feet tom cruise would do it by a giant <laughs> <laughs> um he uh i've got a photo of me during the first test here with the body and the hair and the you know the face and everything the hand um where I'm standing next to him and he just he's like just this imposing towering presence um and I think that that's you know that's what the character is yeah you know he's half demon for yeah. god's sake you know he's he's not you know he's not slight in any way you know he is you know he's full full force well that's what reads in the trailer and I cannot wait Good. to see him kick ass uh I want to ask you about Neil Marshall yes. briefly before we talk about some of the other characters. He has experience with makeup effects. Yeah. And that is huge when yeah. you're working with a director. Uh, let's talk about that, that relationship with him, especially with regard to his use of uh, makeup effects and uh, prosthetics. Well, he's a big fan of practical effects. You know, he... he um, He's a huge support. I mean, he, you know, we all sort of understand how these films are made, and you know, not everything can be practical. Though, um, I think that you know, I, you know, there should have been more practical in this one. I he certainly wanted there to be more. It's just a case of um, you know, not enough time, really. Uh, you know, a, a late start in the build. Uh, what you know, whatever. Um, sort of you know hurdles that we had to overcome with you know building our main characters that's where we put our focus um but yeah neil marshall um huge fan of practical uh very very soft-spoken easy guy to communicate with uh and you know and he really liked what we were doing so you know as long as as long as he liked it then i liked it <laughs> but i mean you know moreover um, you know, Mike Mignola uh, was the guy that, you know, I would show things to to make sure I had his approval, you know, because he is, you know, he is the creator, you know, ultimately of, you know, Hellboy and all its iterations. Was, was he a presence on set? He was uh, in the beginning. Yeah, he was in the beginning when we were establishing things and, you know, getting things off off the ground. But you know, he had other obligations later on. But, of course, by then we were already up and running and we can still send photographs and get feedback and all that. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Mignola because I know there has been, you know, not to name any names, a little bit of pushback about, you know, is this, it should have been the original team coming back. Um, 
not to take anything away from what Guillermo did and what Ron Perlman did, oh, God. but um, to know that Mike Mignola is involved and happy with what's going on should reassure fans that this one is, is going to be great. I would hope so. I mean, you know, uh, Guillermo del Toro's version of Hellboy is fantastic. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. I've always said that. Um, would I like to see a third one of that, you know, that series? Absolutely. But it wasn't going to happen. You know, so when I got the call to do it, it's what am I supposed to say? You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's I, we knew we could bring something to this. It was, a, you know, it was a, a different take on, you know, and I, I'm a fan of, of Mignola's Hellboy. Um, and it was a take on his character that was truer to the source material. You know, um, not like you said, not to take anything away from the films that have come before, but this is, you know, this is something else. And if, you know, if fans, you know, are, are going to, you know, avoid seeing it, if those diehard fans are going to avoid seeing it, so be it. It's like, you know, you can still enjoy this, you know, doesn't it doesn't preclude you from enjoying this. Also, nobody's going to, you know, throw you out of the club, you know, or, or you can have, you know spaghetti every meal for the rest of your life i don't know <laughs> <laughs> my daughter loves spaghetti and she would have it for every meal yeah, so would I. i'm not giving her that option um so let's talk about some, some more of these characters uh yes. before uh we close out this interview um you said there were 30 or so <laughs> we're not going to talk some. about 30 or so <laughs> let's talk about a couple standouts um, yeah and talk about how they were executed and, and who executed them on the team and what made them special well, there's the Gruagak, uh, you know, like I said, and played by Doug Tate. He's like this giant boar man, um, primarily executed by Norman Cabrera. Freaking amazing artist. Uh, and like I said, very lucky to have gotten him for this. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to get him for the next one if there is a next one. Um, he uh, and, and just to break in, that this will make this, this is the third. He's the third Hellboy has been on because he was on the first two. Yeah, Norman. yeah, he's been so on he's all. He's got history. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely does, and, yeah. and his work on all three have been amazing. Yeah. Um, but this one, I mean, he was he was building this boar character. You know, we had uh, Doug Tate in the suit, uh, animatronic head by John Criswell. Um, uh, though they've augmented, I know they've augmented because uh, I've seen it digitally. You know, lip sync stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it came together great. I mean, it's an imposing, you know, sort of. Uh, foe you know brute foe to hellboy mm -hmm. um his real foe is uh, ob uh you know obviously uh the blood queen uh nimue but um yeah i mean uh he's he's her muscle uh don lanning uh primarily sculpted the body though there there were a bunch of people in the shop all rotating around um but uh yeah i mean that was and then norman came out to bulgaria with us also uh, to primarily oversee Gru, uh, but also while we were there, I mean, like we always do, we're building as we go. Mm -hmm. You know, what's later in the schedule? Let's build it after we get off the ground. Um, but yeah, lucky he was able to come out there. Mikey came out there. You know, Dan Rebert uh, uh, handled a lot of the coordinating of um, some of our gore effects and there's these undead witch characters that he was primarily responsible for. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. To, to name everybody, it would be nuts. I'm not going to ask you to do that. Yeah. Uh, gore, is it Goregak? Goregak? Gruagak. Gruagak. Yeah. Uh, arm extensions, uh, lift, not what's arm any of that? What's extensions, because um, Doug is so tall, we didn't really need them, and he had to do a lot with his hands. Uh, but the head sits off of his head, you know, one of those kind of deals where you've got the support on the shoulders, mm -hmm. uh, and it sits off his head by about a foot and a half, two feet. Um, and then, of course, his posturing in it, you know, sold it. Well, I was just looking at footage of Doug Tate in his Athura Zorgon suit yesterday. Yeah. And nice. they, he and Brian <laughs> Steele had to do some difficult postures yeah. to bring those characters to life and Doug is incredible and uh, one of the one of the top in town and he can yeah. physically take it yeah uh, which yeah. is people don't know yeah 
being in a creature suit sounds really fun, but it's exhausting. It's fun for maybe the first five minutes. Yes. You know, because yeah, I did it when here. I was at Steve Johnson's. I did it. Yeah. You know, I was in this giant it's, ogre costume yeah. for a Magic the Gathering commercial. And it's like, get me out of here. I, I couldn't have to see pee. anything. There was like a little camera I'm in there. so hot. Like a lipstick camera that I could see out of the <laughs> nose or something. And it went out in like two minutes. Yeah. I was like, I was blind. You have no idea if you're giving a good performance. No. You can't breathe. And then, of course, you have to perform through all that. Yes. You know? It's... I don't know how they do it. That's not like a prosthetic. It's like, because most of the performance is your physicality, your yeah. body physicality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Doug, great. You had a, you had a, one of the best out there. Yeah. Um, any other characters you want to mention? Just highlights Bobby before Yaga. we wrap this up. Bobby, let's For talk sure, about Bobby. Bobby. Yaga. I just um, like saying it. So let's. Troy uh, James. Um, you may know him. He's been in, in more things now. I think he's in Scary Stories, the, you know, Guillermo's thing coming up. Um, but he was on, he was on uh, America's Got Talent, I think. He's this contortionist guy uh, from Canada that I saw on the Internet, uh, I think attached to uh, some kind of behind-the-scenes thing for The Void. And I was like, ooh, that's the guy. Let's get that guy to be Bobby Yaga. So we did. Um, and then uh, his part grew and grew and grew by the time we got to Bulgaria. So that's, I mean, that, the thing, you know, the, the, you, there's so much of what I was doing on, on Hellboy was, you know, coordinating and, you know, phone calls and all that stuff that you don't get into this business for. So Bobby Yaga was one of those characters that I got a chance to sculpt. Um, I handled the head and neck and the bulk of the body. And then Josh McCarron handled uh, the hands and... Uh, you know, and finished off the body with me. So, uh, and we did that all over in Sofia, Bulgaria. And this again was yeah. a, a foam uh, body suit. That was all uh, silicone. Oh, all silicone. Yeah, all silicone. So super yeah. form fitting, super yes, thin. Exactly. It was all glued on, mm -hmm. um, except for the chest in areas. That was something that Gil engineered when we were over there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it turned out great. And yeah. clearly, you know, the the performance is is what brought this to life you hired a contortionist exactly. i can't wait to see what he does and the sculpture on the face i'm just kidding <laughs> the face. it's all about the face the faces um the yeah no, but that was fun i mean it is nice and usually on every show i'll try to get something that i can do myself yeah and that was mine on this one so and you were the creative eye in the sky who made sure everyone was doing great work so you yeah. kind of get to take credit for all yeah, of it, you maybe. know you know, you yeah, but then it. I like to share that credit. I don't want any yeah, but Just not with Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. There he is in the Oh, background. he's here. <laughs> just shout so they can hear that you're here, Mikey. You. That's Mikey Rotella. <laughs> That's he's been sculpting right behind us. Um, um, and then, uh, you, know, you know, I handled, like I said, I handled the designs with a small design team for both the digital and the practical characters. Um, uh, so... Up real quick. Let's do it. Yeah. Are you going to look for some credits so that we yeah, can fill yeah, in some yeah. blanks? Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Carrasco um, is a designer from Spain, and he uh, was instrumental in. Uh, I, I kind of divided the world up, you know, the, the world of this movie up into three different um, sort of sub worlds of characters. Like, there's the characters that traffic with, you know, with us, with the people of the surface. Right, uh, one of which is Hellboy, Baba Yaga, um, uh, Kamazots. Uh, then there's the characters you know that I referred to and we referred to as the ancient world, which are characters like goblins, you know, fairies, uh, ogres, giants, those characters. Uh, and then there's the characters from Hell. Um, so I w I divided yeah I divided the movie into those three you know sort of classifications of characters special characters um and daniel primarily though he was sort of all over the place he primarily handled the creatures from the ancient world uh and then some of the creatures from our world uh and then uh richard luong uh primarily handled the creatures from our world um then alan williams uh handled the creatures from hell specifically because his design style is so so different than you know any other designer I've seen. It's like very weird and twisted, bone-like, and and sort of surreal. 
And that's what I wanted those characters to look like. Um, so whenever, you know, whenever we had a design approved, you know, and, and we knew a design was going to be uh, digital, uh, what we did, I mean, like, for example, Daniel uh, works primarily in ZBrush and then some Photoshop overlay stuff. Um, I would get those ZBrush models from him, send them to Dave Grasso, uh, who is also a brilliant sculptor, both, you know, practical and digital. And he would render them out complete, and we'd turn them then over to the visual effects department, who would then pass them to one of the houses that were hired to execute this character, this sequ sequence, or whatever. So Grasso would take them up to photo reel, go exactly. in and do poor texture and yep. wrinkles and yep. line work. Okay. Yeah, and he's amazing at it. It's, it's yep. you know, it's it's I guess the same sort of methodology as practical sculpting, you know, except in a, you know, in a virtual world. And though I wanted some of those characters to be practical, um, what he did with them digitally is fantastic. Well, you brought practical skills into the digital yeah. realm. And, and, that, and he's already got those, you know, because yeah. he started in practical. Yeah, of course, Dave yeah. has a long history with yeah. Stan Winston Studio, and uh, we love that guy. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, so why don't we wrap this up? Uh, I feel like I, I'm even more excited to see the film cool. because of a few things. Number one, that Neil gets it, right. and I can't wait to see how he bridges the digital and practical. Also, I love that you, you did get to oversee the whole world because, yeah. as you said at the very beginning, having that cohesive uh, sensibility is really key to, to films where you're building a whole world. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is there, is there anything, you know, that stands out to you that you want to share at the very end about this movie and why people should go see this movie? Um, I mean, it, it's all, you know, from beginning to end, it's, it's, you know, it's deep. And, and what, what I like about it, what I took away from it when I saw the, uh, the cut is that it's a good, fun monster fight. You know, it's, you know, whether they're practical or digital or whatever, it's like, it's a fun monster fight. You know, it's like you don't get many of those anymore. You know, it's like almost like a, a like an 80s movie, you know, with, you know, some like some different techniques utilized, you know. And then plus um, what, <laughs> what I thought was a, a, a kick is I'm in it for like, you know, one scene. Right. I uh, by the time I was like, oh, I, you know, I, I'm going to try to jump in this somewhere. I mean, I think we all are actually. Uh, Gil was in it. Um, uh, my wife Cindy was in it, um, but I actually got to be a. Oh, my stepdaughter was in it, but I, you know, I try to get her and everything. Um, but I actually got a line. I got to say a line uh, as as a. Uh, I'm a Nazi. It's like when you watch the Red Band trailer. It's like the first, you know, you the first shot I think is an island, and then the second shot is like Rasputin, you know, saying some incantation. Then it cuts to me as like Baron. Uh, or, or Klaus Werner von Krupp, not Bear, but uh, yeah. You got to ride this and g know, start I, going out for the Nazi parts. Yeah, I don't you know. You have about the that. look. I shaved my head. Hair <laughs> hot. I did shave my head, oh my but God. it's like I was so bad. I'm not an actor. You're an actor. I am not an actor. But it's amazing what editing can do. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, I look like I know what I'm doing. It's all digital. It's all digital. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I've been digitally comped in. Like, no, we're going to totally redo yeah. this guy's performance. Digital performance virtual. alteration. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for chatting, dude. You You've got gotten it, nothing done on this <laughs> sculpture. Well, I'm still waiting for this Alco to dry. So okay. I think it's now. It looks yeah. dry. Right? I thought we were going to get a little demo as we were talking, but Joel's just been mm. sitting here talking to me. No, I get um, easily distracted. Well, we, you, <laughs> as, we, as you know, Joel, Joel, uh, we love you. You're one of our teachers. You too, uh, you're you're such a talent. You you surround yourself with very talented people, including Mikey Rotella. That's my talent is surrounding uh, myself with more talented people. That's a, hey, that is a very <laughs> smart man. And yeah, Dan right? knew that that was the secret yeah. to doing great things. So yeah. you're doing it too. And uh, I cannot wait to see this movie. Uh, when you guys hear this audio interview, the movie will be out. Excellent. So uh, leave some comments in, in the chat there about what you thought about Joel and his team's work on the film. Thanks again but for chatting But only if they're us. positive. Yes, only positive, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm coming after no, you. No, we have an algorithm. We, it deletes <laughs> all night. I play negative. a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, I'll hold my all right. I will find you. 
<laughs> he will fight you. <laughs> and with that, we're wrapping this interview. Thanks again. Thanks, buddy. All right.